Today I'm talking about obstructive sleep apnea and the drastic consequences it can have not just on our life quality, but also on our life expectancy. Because it's predicted 2.5 million people in the UK suffer with this and most of them don't know it. I know this because in my day-to-day -day job as an NHS GP, I am seeing more and more people presenting with the same symptom, a symptom that is so common in the medical profession, we actually have an abbreviation for it. TAT, or tired all the time. People go to their doctor worried about things like their iron levels, vitamins, anemia, their hormones. And on the other hand, you've got doctors focusing on stress and hectic lifestyles as the main contributor. All the while, a seemingly harmless habit is going unnoticed. Something we've all done at some point. Something we've all laughed about at some point. Snoring. But what if that snoring is a red flag for something else? Something silently chipping years off your life? And what if that exhaustion is a result of your body struggling for oxygen night after night after night? And what if there was something you could do that could fix it? So let's find out how snoring can cause so much damage. How to spot the telltale signs of sleep apnea and crucially, the actionable steps you can take to stop it from impacting your life. Snoring is something that a lot of us can just laugh about, except for maybe your partner, but how can this lead to so many health issues? Well, when you drift off to sleep, your muscles relax, including the ones that hold open your throat. Now, for most people, this isn't a problem, but for millions of people, this relaxation can turn into airway collapse. Think of your upper airway like a soft garden hose. All it takes is a little pressure from inside or out, and suddenly it kinks. Well, for your upper airway, there are three things that might cause that. The muscles in your throat could get too relaxed, maybe because of alcohol, sedatives, or just how your body is built. Maybe that tube, maybe the anatomy of that airway is already narrow. Things like big tonsils, a thick tongue, nasal blockages or a deviated septum can make it tighter. Pressure from the outside, like just having a thick neck, lying on your back, or most importantly, obesity could all put excess pressure on that upper airway, causing it to collapse. And here's the dangerous bit. When that airway closes, you can't breathe. Your oxygen levels drop, and your carbon dioxide starts building up. Alarm bells go off and your brain panics. It screams, wake up, now. But it doesn't wake you fully, just a micro arousal. Enough to tense the muscles, snort in some air, and then back down you go. Until it happens again, and again. 10 times, 50 times, sometimes 100 times, every single night. And every one of those interruptions floods your body with the hormones adrenaline and cortisol over and over. Your blood pressure rises, your heart's working overtime. All the while, your brain doesn't get the deep, restorative sleep and oxygen it needs. This isn't just about being groggy in the morning. This is chronic fatigue, poor memory, depression, increased risk of car accidents, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, and even reduced life expectancy. So the big question is, how do you know if this is happening to you? That's what we're going to unpack next. Most people don't come in to me saying, I think I stop breathing when I sleep. They come in saying, I just don't feel right. I'm tired all the time. I wake up feeling worse than when I went to bed. And this is what makes it really easy to miss. You've really got to be looking for it. And I like to think of there being nighttime clues and daytime clues. Now, strangely enough, a person with sleep apnea might say they sleep like a baby because those micro arousals are not enough to wake you up fully. So the best person to ask is your partner about snoring, gasps, choking, or pauses in your breathing. But other clues you might notice are waking up suddenly, sometimes with a racing heart, morning headaches from low oxygen overnight, dry mouth or sore throat in the morning, and night sweats. Here are some of the things you're probably feeling during the day. You've got foggy brain, trouble concentrating, memory slips, mood swings, irritability, 
depression, and this may translate as falling asleep while watching TV, while reading, or even dangerously behind the wheel. Now, you don't need to have all of these symptoms, and in fact, a lot of people deny most of them until their partner starts explaining. So how can you be sure? Now, you can't diagnose sleep apnea by just guessing. You need evidence. So when you go to your GP, they'll probably refer you for sleep studies or polysomnography. This can be done in a sleep lab or even at home with a simple monitor. It tracks your oxygen levels, your breathing pattern, your heart rate, how often you wake up, even if you don't remember it. And what it gives you is a number, the apnea hypopnea index, which gives you an indication of how many times overnight you stop or struggle with your breathing. So now that we know how to spot it, what next? What can be done? Can it be fixed? Or is it simply a choice between a CPAP machine or nothing? First of all, this condition is treatable and for a lot of people, fixable, but it's about knowing which option works best for you. So this one is the mask, continuous positive airway pressure. It sounds intense, but it's not as scary as it looks. It's basically a stream of air that keeps your airway inflated so that you can actually breathe. And that changes everything. You get better sleep, sharper focus, lower blood pressure, reduced risk of heart attacks and strokes, fewer car crashes, and even better mood. It sounds like a no brainer, right? But in reality, only about half of people actually use it. And here's why. The mask can feel claustrophobic, it can be noisy, and it can dry you out. And let's be honest, it's not the best look. But there are a few ways that you can make it work better for you. For example, with a proper fit, choosing a nasal or an oral interface you actually like, chin straps for leaks, heated humidifiers to ease that irritation, and even medicines short term can help you adjust. So if you can stick with it, it could literally add years to your life. Now, if you're not ready for CPAP, there are other options. Mandibular repositioning devices are little mouth guards that pull your lower jaw forward, keeping your airway open. It's not as effective as CPAP, but it's much better tolerated by some people. Tongue retaining devices, again, odd looking, but for the right person, life-changing. And then there's surgery. So if your anatomy is the issue, then some surgical options might include tonsillectomy, nasal surgeries, uh, this one, all the way to hypoglossal nerve stimulators which is like having a pacemaker for your tongue. But please don't overlook the basics. Weight loss is massive. It's hard, but if you can lose up to 10% of your body weight, you will significantly reduce the impact of sleep apnea. And even just sleep positioning, not sleeping on your back could keep that airway open. And don't forget the importance of sleep hygiene, things like fixed sleep times, avoiding alcohol before bed, and no screens in bed. Look, the whole point of this is to try and get your life back, maybe even the life you didn't know you were missing, but also to prevent complications because sleep apnea is a risk factor for things like heart attacks and strokes. So if you're serious about protecting your heart and you want to live a long and healthy life, it might be worthwhile learning about the other things that can affect your heart and your brain. Things that you can change, things that you can't change. And then there are hidden factors that could be increasing your chances of having a heart attack or stroke. And that's why I've made this video. So if you want to learn about the risk factors for having these things so that you can perhaps intervene, intervene and make a change, then maybe pop over there if you've got a few minutes. Thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you over there.